back iOS programmers. On this Oracle Mobile Cloud Service video, where we're going to look at the support for geofences. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Now, similar to the recent iOS iBeacon videos, what we're going to do here on the geofence video is split this video into two. If you've never worked with the iOS geofences before, this video is for you. It's going to take you through how to write the vanilla code to work against the iOS location services or geofences. However, if you're a seasoned iOS developer who already knows all this stuff, we suggest you skip on to the next video to cover how MCS can aid you with iOS geofences. Still with me? Great. So let's build a little sample iOS application to work with a geofence. Now, to do this, we need to work through essentially seven core tasks in our code. First of all, we need to create a reference to the iOS core location manager. Then we must request permission from the user to monitor for a region representing the geofence. Next, we check the device is actually capable of monitoring for the geofence region. We then create a CL circular region object with the latitude, longitude and radius we want to detect, essentially the geofence. Then we register a CL location manager delegate to handle the events raised by our mobile user entering and exiting this geofence represented by the CL circular region. Then we're good to start, no, we're good to go, I should say, and we're good to start monitoring for the geofence, which will raise events in our CL location manager delegate that we just defined. And at some later point to save our battery life, we also need to provide code to stop monitoring for the region. Great, right. so let's demonstrate these seven steps, okay, now in Xcode. For our first step, we need to set up a CL location manager object provided by the iOS core location services. To do this, we need to add the core location framework to our project. Then we can create the CL location manager reference in our code. Having set up a CL location manager object specifically for the geofence circular region, we're going to monitor for in a moment, we need to ask permission to monitor for this from the user. Now, unlike iBeacons, where we can optionally use request when in use authorization, for geofences we must use request always authorization. And as I'm sure you'll know as a seasoned iOS developer, as of iOS 8, to use this permission, what we also need to do in the info plist file is we must include the key NS location always use user's description with a message to show the user when we seek their permission. Otherwise, the geofence monitoring will fail silently. Next, we call the authorization status method to check the user has actually given us permission to monitor for the geofence. And with a second call to is monitoring available for class, passing in the seal circular region class, we check that the device is currently capable of monitoring for circular geofences. Having done this, we can then define the seal circular region we're interested in monitoring for. This requires that we define a seal location degrees object to carry the latitude. And as we can see here, the hard-coded double value is 37.530439 as well as another CL location degrees instance to carry the longitude, here negative 122.264483. In addition, we define a CL location distance to carry the radius of the geofence from the latitude and longitude. And as you can see here, we've defined it at a thousand meters. With the latitude and longitude in hand, we then must define a CL location coordinate 2D, okay, as a coordinate object. Finally, we can now define a CL circular region with the coordinate we just created, the radius, and custom region identifier. From here, for circular regions, the default behavior when we start to monitor our mobile user entering and exiting the geofence is to raise events. But as you can see here, you can also set notify on entry and exit to yes or no to control which events are raised. By default, both of these are on, but it's just useful to show you for demonstration purposes that you can influence which events are raised. Having done all this, we need to define for the CL Location Manager object a class that conforms to the CL Location Manager Delegate protocol. And this acts as the delegate for the Location Manager. It will handle the events associated with the geofence, essentially when the user enters and exits the geofence. For anyone not familiar with a CL Location Manager Delegate, it includes numerous methods that you can override with your own logic, where the methods are called on certain location-based events. 
So in this example, the location manager did enter region method is called when the mobile device enters the region. Conversely, the location manager did exit region method is called when the mobile device exits the region. So it is in these methods we add our own logic, such as, for example, showing a message to the mobile user as they enter and exit the geofence. For our purposes of the demonstration here, we'll keep this very simple by just showing some hard-coded alert messages for now. Returning to our main code block, once we've set up the delegate, we are ready to start monitoring. And we can do that by calling the start monitoring for region method, passing in the circular region we just defined. Of course, after turning on the monitoring, to save battery life at some point, we'll also need to turn this off too, so here's the opposite logic which we'll need later. Right, that's all that code that we need. So let's test this out in the iOS simulator. Now the iOS simulator allows you to simulate the mobile user moving to different locations, and this is very useful for our purposes here in testing the geofence. We do this by running the app in the simulator, and by the iOS simulator debug location menu, we can then enter a custom latitude and longitude. Okay, let's start with a custom latitude and longitude, where we'll use values which aren't anywhere near our geofence that we hard-coded in the application. As you can see here, the app is running, and I'll press the Do Start Monitoring button to start the monitoring. Okay, so at the moment, nothing's happening in the application. Now, returning to the custom latitude and longitude settings, I'll now place the mobile user right on top of my original latitude and longitude coordinates that we're monitoring for, simulating the user moving into our geofence region. As you can see, our app immediately responds with the custom message we raised in our delegate did enter region method. And then, if we change the latitude and longitude again to something outside of the geofence, now we can see the message from the did exit region method. There you go, as you can see the vanilla code for working with geofences is pretty simple, you agree. So in this video you learned how to work with geofences in iOS, but stick with us in the next video to learn how MCS can make this much more interactive and useful for real applications. See you in that next video very soon.